Can you just tell us what happened yesterday afternoon? Sure. Um, as you're aware, we've uh, continued our searches of the Machins Beach area. Um, as the weather conditions have changed, uh, we've been able to access more areas around Machins. Uh, one of our specialist search coordinators um, identified a number of areas that our volunteer searchers couldn't access due to some safety reasons. So we called upon the expertise of our uh, police dive squad. Uh, they attended earlier this week and have been uh, searching some of those wetland areas uh, where the mangroves are. And yesterday at about 3.30 they discovered uh, some skeletal remains uh, within the mangroves. Uh, our preliminary investigations uh, don't indicate uh, that there's anything suspicious about the death, but you know, as for a cause of death, we um, you know we have a lot more uh, forensic examinations to do. Uh, the the parents of uh, Declan, because ov obviously everyone's linking this to Declan, have been advised of of the findings so far. Um, you know, they're obviously concerned, um, as you know, as you would expect, um, but they're awaiting further advice from us when we can get some sort of confirmation. Given the location and and the fact that I guess these search was happening because of Declan's disappearance, police must be fairly confident that this is connected to Declan? Well, I, w I wouldn't say we're confident, but um, we do have a lot of other forensic testing to do. Um, we'll get some DNA analysis because the, um, the remains are um, quite decayed, so um, we can't, certainly can't tell from what we've located at this stage. Was anything else found in the area, clothing or personal items or anything? Um, the, the, uh, there is clothing there, but as I say, it's, it's quite decayed, so it's difficult to identify. What's the process? Does the testing have to happen in Brisbane, or can some of that happen here in Cairns? Um, the majority of our forensic testing is, is done in Brisbane, so um, we have some forensic officers out there again today just to um, review the search area in some better light, because as you'd understand, we... Um, it was quite dark yesterday when they were finalising their search. So they're back out there this morning. Um, once we've finalised our, our examinations out there, we will um, send some of the remains down to Brisbane for DNA testing. How long before there's a result, do you think? Um, I couldn't say. Um, it, it just depends on, on how the quality of, of the material they've got to test. Um, so they may have to test a number of items before they can get a some sort of DNA match. You said it was non-suspicious at this stage. Is there any possibility that it could have been made to look like it's not suspicious and the body's been dumped there? Yeah, well, certainly we can't rule that out. Um, and, you know, certainly our investigations don't stop here. Uh, we're continuing um, the investigations we've been doing about um, locating Declan. Uh, we still have staff here, um, specialist staff to assist us. Um, our major incident room's still running. So, um, you know, all those inquiries we'll, we'll conduct and, and try and determine what the, what the cause of death was. One of the many rumours that has been doing the rounds is that Declan may have met with a crocodile. Is there any evidence of that, or is that an area where that that's a possible scenario? Yeah, um, where the remains were found is not in, um, it's certainly not in water, it's a tidal area. Um, I don't believe it would be inundated with a, a large volume of water, but um, there's nothing to indicate that that's the case. Are there any signs of suicide at all? Um, there are some signs of, you know, that give us, I guess, some information that it's not suspicious. Obviously, not looking at making any arrests. Um, not at this stage, and, and as I say, we've got a lot, a lot more to do um, around our examination. So, um, once we get the results of those, I guess we'll know more. It obviously was a shock to police uh, and obviously detectives or whoever making the um, discovery. Are they um, receiving any sort of um, special? We do have systems in place um, whereby we have support for officers who are involved in, um, in situations like this, so um, anyone who needs assistance will, will refer. How, how close are we talking to Declan's home? Um, I believe it's, as in a straight line, it's about 300 metres from the rear of the residence. Uh, the bushland area um, is very thick, um, it's certainly not a uh, well trafficked area, and it, it was only through the expertise of the dive squad that that the remains were located. Um, they um, have been extremely thorough in their searching of those um, inaccessible areas and uh, you know they'd, they've come across it was at 3.30 as I said. Was it just a routine search at that police were doing? They didn't receive any tip-offs or information? No, it was just a, a routine search of, of those areas that we knew were, were sort of wetland areas which were difficult to get to. Um, early on in the um, searches, shortly after his disappearance, th those areas would have been underwater, um, but when I say underwater, um, you know, probably just uh, 
certainly a, at least a foot, I think, is uh, the advice I've got. Glenn, um, given uh, you know, you've been dealing so closely with the family and um, the way that all the indicators are showing up that you know, we're looking at a suicide, do you think it's time for us as a society to have a look at breaking down the taboos of, of youth suicide? Uh, I guess it's probably too early to discuss that and, until we sort of determine exactly what has happened. I wouldn't really want to go into what, what we need to do holistically. Yeah, and I'll, but obviously it's, it's an issue that um, you know, we all wrestle with you know, as police, as, as media, you know, as the public, isn't it? So how, how do you think that this case, given the prominence that it's had, do you think that that's something that maybe it's time for a trigger on, on, t on breaking down those taboos? Oh, I think certainly, you know, Family, schools, anyone that has contact with young people should um, be aware of the signs um, of people who maybe maybe feel that, like they may have uh, suicidal tendencies. But uh, you know that's that's something that I, I think we should be doing already. I don't think that um, this incident should be a trigger for uh, people to to do that. And was there anything in the investigation that, that, that did have the warning signs? I mean. Uh, in um, our inquiries, that we have come up with some pieces of information, but but nothing that uh, you know particularly leads to that. Uh, obviously, those inquiries, computer inquiries, are continuing. Uh, most of most of Declan's contact um, was through computer, Facebook, and those sort of things. Uh, some of that information is difficult to retrieve, and we're still working through that. Did any of the Facebook and um, information that you found on the computer indicate that you know that he was depressed or unhappy with his life? Oh, there's there's a broad range of things he discusses on Facebook, and uh, you know there are I guess some small areas where there, there is some mention of, of um, you know different thoughts about different things, but um, nothing um, specific that has has led us in that direction as part of the investigation. I mean that's just one of the scenarios that we've looked at, you know across from from the day Declan went missing. Um, and the family was so sure that well, Ruth Crouch was. Um, maintained, I guess, that um, he had run away or was being harboured. How did this news come to her? Oh, well, understandably, they're upset. I mean, they don't have confirmation yet that um, the remains are Declan. So they're, we're discussing with them and keeping them up to date on any of our findings. Are you still looking at accidental death as, a, as an option as well? Oh, certainly, yeah. We're, as, as I said, there's nothing to indicate that uh, it's suspicious, but... Uh, you know, until we've con conducted and finalised our examinations, we really can't be sure. Was this an area frequented by Declan? Did he have any reason to be in that part um, of He was known to walk around in the bushland, but um, whether that particular spot is, is somewhere that he, he frequented, we can't But he can't often went for bushland walks. Yeah. Can you able to describe in a little bit more detail the sort of the scene where um, the remains were found? You mentioned mangroves and a creek, but are you able to sort of describe how difficult it is to get to? Uh, extremely difficult to get to. Um, it's it's like a tidal wetland area, so um, it, it seems that the type you know on different tides there there would be water over the ground there, um, but it's it was somewhere that was inaccessible to our search teams earlier, um, and it was only the um, the, the special skills, I guess, of, of our dive squad searchers that, that got into that area. If the dive squad had been brought in earlier, could they have searched it? Um, I guess given given the, the conditions, um, most likely not. It was only um, recently in recent searches in the past few weeks that those areas were identified that, that still weren't readily accessible to our volunteer searchers. And that was because of the lasting impacts of the wet season? Because it was um, yeah, mostly, and and also that it's that it's tidal area. What so sort of searches will be happening today? As far as you know, obviously there's a few people heading there today. Um, the our forensic examiners will look at the scene again just to to make sure that they've um, covered all the area. Um, we've done a perimeter search around the location of the remains to see if there's any other evidence, um, and and those perimeter searches they may may continue this morning as well. So will the remains be sent to the John Tong Centre in Brisbane? Is that the usual process? Yes. Yeah. And in cases such as this, is that process sort of expedited, I guess, because we know that the John Tong Centre sometimes... Yeah, well, we're, we're certainly um, making representations to expedite it so we can get the information back to the family as soon as possible. They posted last night on Facebook, Never Give Up Hope, it's been 12 hours now. How are they holding up today? Um, as I said, understandably, they're, you know, they're upset and... 
you know, and Ruth, I think, has, as was mentioned, has maintained hope throughout this investigation, um, as I expect most parents to. Um, so, I mean, I would, I would expect Ruth to, to maintain that hope until she does get confirmation. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Oh, oh sorry, one, one thing. Um, it's probably a good opportunity to thank the media for all the assistance that we've received and, and keeping this um, within, the, I guess, the public domain. And we have received um, a lot of information from the public um, and also the assistance we've received from the SES and volunteers in the searches that we've conducted throughout the investigation as well. Yeah, it's going to be, it feels like it's going to be a huge sort of emotional response from the public, you know, given that, you know, you look around Cairns and there's still all the posters up for Declan and mm -hmm. it is quite, it does feel quite sad, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I think um, the whole community, you know, know about this um, this situation, and 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 not just the Cairns community. I, I know, you know, Australia wide, this is, uh, you know, there's a lot of interest in this case. So I, I would expect that, yeah, a lot of people will be affected by the, by the, um, you know, what we found so far, and and I guess are awaiting any sort of confirmation that we may be able to give. And Gwen, obviously, there's this forensic testing and so forth happening today. Will there be any other? Um, work happening in terms of interviewing any of the people in that particular part of Machen's Beach. Was that one of the areas that was covered in those the first round of yeah, interviews? We, we've spoken to the um, Machen's Beach community, members of the Machen's Beach, the Machen's Beach community numerous times. Um, they've been very helpful uh, throughout the whole investigation, but uh, you know the findings yesterday, I, I don't see that that will um, I guess start off any, any further interviews of any people out there. Thank you. Thank you.